Good morning. Good morning. My name is Charlie, and I'm a staff member here at St. Norbert. Wherever you find yourself on your journey of faith today, welcome. We're really glad you're here. And you might know that we're celebrating Easter throughout this season. It's not only a one-day celebration, but it's a whole season of celebrating resurrection and new life. One way we do that during Mass is we have the blessing and sprinkling of holy water, So Father is going to go over and bless the water there, and then he's going to sprinkle you with it during Mass. It's a reminder of our baptism, which, of course, is a symbol of new life, and it's something that many of us don't remember. So it's always good to to recognize that, um, that new life that we're called to, especially during this season. So let's take a moment of silence to prepare our hearts and minds for worship, Let's invite the resurrected Jesus to be with us during this Mass. Please stand for Mass. Thank you. 
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My sisters and brothers, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water that God has created. It will be sprinkled on us as a memorial of our baptism. May God help us by his grace to remain faithful to the spirit we have received. Lord our God, in your mercy be present to your people's prayers. And for all who recall the wondrous work of our creation and the still greater work of our redemption, graciously bless this water. For you created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also made water the instrument of your mercy. For through water you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water the prophets proclaimed the new covenant you were to enter upon with the human race. And last of all, through water, which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you renewed our corrupted nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter have received their baptism through Christ our Lord. of our sins and through the celebration of this Eucharist make us worthy to share at the table of his kingdom. Amen. Amen. Glory, glory to God in the highest. Glory, glory to God in the highest. And on earth peace to people of good We glorify you. 
us pray. May your people exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I'd like to invite our children to please come forward for their own liturgy of the word. <clears throat> You know, boys and girls, when you get in trouble, sometimes it happens, not all the time, right? But sometimes you wanna to go to a safe place so that you don't you know, have to hear your mom or dad talk real loudly at you. Or sometimes when you're not feeling real happy, you like to go to a safe place. Peter and the other disciples in the gospel today were really upset about losing Jesus and they went to a safe place. They went fishing today. And that's what you guys are gonna do. You're going fishing. So have good, big ears wide open to hear God's word and then you'll come back and join us. Let's send them forth with a blessing. Go with my reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the captain and the court officers had brought the apostles in and made them stand before the Sanhedrin, the high priest questioned them. We gave you strict orders, did we not, to stop teaching in that name? Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and want to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles said in reply, we must obey God rather than men. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus, though you had him killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to grant Israel repentance and forgiveness of sins. We are witnesses of these things, as is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. The Sanhedrin ordered the apostles to stop speaking in the name of Jesus and dismissed them. So they left the presence of the Sanhedrin, rejoicing that they had been found worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of the name. The word of the Lord. Praise to the Lord, you his feet. 
A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, looked and heard the voices of many angels who surrounded the throne and the living creatures and the elders. They were countless in number, and they cried out in a loud voice, worthy is the land that was slain to receive power and riches, wisdom and strength, honor and glory and blessing. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth, and under the earth and in the sea, everything in the universe cry out, to the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honor, glory and might, forever and ever. The four living creatures answered, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshiped. The word of the Lord. According to John. At that time, Jesus revealed himself again to his disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. He revealed himself in this way Together were Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, Zebedee's sons, and two other of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, we also will come with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. When it was already dawn, Jesus was standing on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, have you caught anything to eat? They said to him, no. So he said to them, 
cast the net over the right side of the boat and you will find something. So they cast it and were not able to pull it in because of the number of fish. So the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he tucked in his garment for he was lightly clad and jumped into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat for they were not far from shore, only about a hundred yards, dragging the net with the fish. When they climbed out on shore, they saw a charcoal fire with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you just caught. So Simon Peter went over and dragged the net ashore, full of 153 large fish. Even though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come have breakfast. And none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Because they realized it was the Lord. Jesus came over and took the bread and gave it to them, and in like manner the fish. This was now the third time Jesus was revealed to his disciples after being raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Simon Peter answered him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. He then said to Simon Peter a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon Peter answered him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. Jesus said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that Jesus had said to him a third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Amen, amen, I say to you, when you were younger, you used to dress yourself and go where you wanted. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. He said this signifying by what kind of death he would glorify God. And when he had said this, he said to him, follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. So I have a story for you of a remorseful parishioner. You see, one Sunday, probably when Father Jim was preaching, he heard a sermon about Psalms 51 and 52. And the preacher made it so clear that God knows our hidden sins and demolishing all of the things that keep us dishonest. So the man decided that he was going to write a remorseful letter to the IRS. I've been unable to sleep these last two weeks, he said, with the knowledge that I have cheated on my income tax by understating my taxable income. Therefore, I'm enclosing a check in the amount of $150. Probably unwisely, he wrote the next sentence. If I still can't sleep, I'll send the rest. <laughs> you don't know whether to laugh at this guy or commend him, but something got touched in him. You know, 
It's easy for me to imagine that the disciples, especially Peter, had a sleepless night or two. Consider how they abandoned Jesus, and in particular, Peter's cowardly betrayal before Jesus died, including vigorously denying that he knew him three times. Can you imagine how Peter must have felt and wanted to undo that damage? I'd like to highlight that maybe at the heart of this gospel, this Sunday, is a clear message to us that there's always time for a second chance, a, a new beginning, if you will. Before his encounter with Jesus, Peter probably felt that he would go to his grave without being able to make things right with the Lord face to face. But you know what he did? He did something that I think we all are apt to do. He made an attempt to go back to his ordinary life. Yes, feeling hurt, feeling abandoned himself maybe, knowing that he hurt Jesus, not understanding everything that happened, trying to imagine that Jesus has raised from the dead, he does what is normal for him. He goes fishing. And did you notice that all the other disciples with him get into the boat as well? Maybe John, the gospel writer, is trying to teach us something. Isn't it interesting that in the dance that the disciples were doing, that we too often meet Jesus and in the ordinary is where Jesus meets us. Sometimes where we're stuck or unsure or maybe even paralyzed, that's where Jesus met the disciples in what they were used to. I wonder if there are things that we have gotten used to. If there are things in our lives that distract us from being a good disciple of Jesus. In this Easter season, every Sunday, we begin the liturgy with the renewing of our baptismal promises. Remembering that through baptism, we died to an old way of life that was marked by bad choices and bad behaviors. And so I ask you this week, as I ask myself, what are the kinds of old habits or behaviors that you would like to abandon in order to be more Christ-like? Maybe we're being offered a second chance a new beginning, if you will. And maybe one of these might strike you as something you have to work on. Complaining, bullying, being selfish, being lazy, or being prejudiced. Imagine what homes and schools and workplaces and even our parish might be like if we spent these great 50 days of Easter working to let go of one old habit or one behavior. Psychologists will tell us that if we want to let go and change, it's necessary to take something else on. So in the same way that we begin to reflect upon that one habit or one behavior that we want to change, what is the one behavior or habit that we would like to take on to reflect the change that we're trying to make? 
You have to replace the habit or behavior if you want to leave behind something that's significantly needing to be reduced. The time between today and Pentecost Sunday is the perfect time for letting go and working to make changes happen. In the remaining days of these great 50 days of Easter, can you hear Jesus say to you, don't let anything hold you back. Don't let anything stand in your way. Let go of the old and celebrate the new. Focus in for a second on that encounter between Jesus and Peter in the gospel. By asking three times, Jesus allows Peter to completely erase his shame and get on with the task of a new mission, being a better disciple. Jesus comes to us this day in this Eucharist to forgive us, to feed us, so that we, like Peter, can have a second chance, a new beginning, as it were to undertake the mission to which we hear Jesus calling us to embrace, that through our own baptism, we are called to extend God's love to all people. Allow me to leave you with a prayer. It's titled, A Prayer for New Beginnings. O oh God of young faith and new beginnings, I remember the church of my childhood where you first stepped into my life and fed me with your life. Your life is a treasure I have never stopped seeking. It is a treasure I have never stopped finding. I remember the deep, ever-growing faith of my parents, who not only taught me to walk, but taught me to walk in your paths. But now, in the middle of my years, I need you, O oh God of young faith and new beginnings. For the path my parents pointed out to me seems to be a path that leads to a cross and I hunger for a sign, a rainbow, a sprouting seed, a meal shared with love, a warm embrace to assure me that it really is the best path. O oh God of young faith and tired faith, breathe into my life a new beginning. May this day be for us a new beginning to commit ourselves to Jesus who loves us beyond what we can imagine. Together, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible.
Throughout the Easter season, we rejoice with all creation in the hope given us in Jesus' resurrection. Trusting now in God, let us lift up our needs and the needs of those in the world in prayer. For the church, especially for our members throughout the world celebrating Easter in the midst of persecution and violence, let us pray to the Lord. For all those in authority, that the grace of humility may be the foundation of their compassionate and just use of power for the common good. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that throughout the whole world, whatever is weak may be strengthened, whatever is broken restored, whatever is lost found, and whatever is found redeemed. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for our St. Norbert community, that our newly baptized members and all of us who have risen with Jesus in baptism may experience the foretaste of heavenly delight this Easter season. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For all the sick of our parish, among them Blanca Cabrera, Duquetsi Rincones, Andrew Farrell, Patricia Boyce, Naomi, Naomi Grace Rouse, Matthew Rice, that God will bring them healing, comfort, and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For all those who have died, among them Ed Christie, Valerie Pojozelski, that they will rise with Jesus into eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord and for Asanta Genona, for whom this Mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. Loving God, you have given us new life through the resurrection of your son, Jesus. Help us to experience and share the joy of the resurrection. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
pray that your sacrifice and mine might be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church. And as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with Easter joy, Every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who, who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, 
we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis, our Pope, Nelson, our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with Saints Augustine and Norbert, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share with each other some sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. As you're leaving church today, you're going to see some school students and their parents. Given the special relationship between the parish and St. Norbert Norbert School, we're asking you to please consider consider taking a flyer that's explaining some of the stuff that's going on in school and also to let you know about their annual fund and to see if you might be willing to help with their annual fund. It's really helping the parish because the school, in their making the, the annual fund grow, is less subsidy that we have to pay as a parish. So the main goal is that you understand what's going on in school and keep the school in prayer. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Christ the Lord is risen today, Alleluia. All on earth with angels sing, Alleluia. Raise your joys and triumphs high. Hey